My name is Pam Cook, and my life is poetry. Wedding vows. I said wedding vows twice, uh, once to a man and once to a woman. To a man at the Glendale Center Theater. To a woman in the backyard garden of a lesbian couple. To a man, I was in complete charge. Strategic planning, inventory of props, sound effects, and mood lighting. Seeking arrangements, and on the theater marquee, the name of the place showing that evening, I came to your wedding. To a woman, no one in charge, practical, simple, in the moment. No guest book, flowers from the lesbian couple's garden, preschool chairs for the toddlers. Sweet choices. To a man, a honeymoon at a Lake Tahoe hotel where he got a really bad sunburn on about 60% of his body. <laughs> to a woman, a honeymoon in a big bear cabin where we never left. The sanctity of both marriages ended in divorce. I cheated on him. She cheated on me. My name is Kubi Kugler, and my life is poetry. My long title is, Some Think, Some Think It's Karma, Keeping Track of All the Behavior. It's probably the same old thing with just a different twist. Three killed in, Det in Detroit, one wounded. I heard it on the 11 o'clock news. It's witnessing my life. I'm still bleeding. I'm still healing. I think of white blossoming hyacinths. It fills my soul. The aroma of spring. A kind, gentle wind brings the breeze. But just behind the cold, harsh winter is still coming for one more play. Snow is coming. Winter is not finished with me yet. And yet again, oh, hope has been put aside for just a while. The same the same story repeats year after year. I know I'm finally done with that part of my life. I tell myself I can do this. I cannot do this again. Yet my soul knows this time it's different. It's time to stop. It's time to let loose of all the hurts and all the things that touched me so deeply. And I must stop pretending I have a new way to make this all work out. I need to feel love. And self-care is a good start. Close my eyes and dream. Bur bury myself one more time beneath the frost line and wait until it's safe safe to come out and breathe again. Thank you. Uh, my name is Frank Timothy Elliott. My life is poetry. The name of my poem is Harrison. I didn't even know you, but we both smoked dope, so what? Your meatballs, Piemonte, was a treat. The aftermath of grease and goo, the countertop all white and sticky with flour and spilled wine. I began to think you were not my roommate, but a pig. You never picked up a sock or put away a dish. You never made your bed. But still, you laughed and brought home friends. We listened to the War of the Worlds as though it were on a movie screen wrapped in stoned attention as the folks of Grover's Mill screaming with fear as the invaders ravaged life and limb. You came home that day and said, I quit, leaving me without a breath. 
If you're not fit for this degree, how will I survive? You, so smart, so talented, so sure. How could I proceed if you have not the stamina, the strength that you need to push through fear and take a stand to just keep on keeping on until the muse comes through again? I didn't even know you, but now you are my friend. My name is David Epstein, and my life is poetry. The poem I'm going to read for you is titled, I Try to Write a Poem. Sitting in class in the art gallery at the village, I am asked to write a poem about marriage. I draw a complete blank. I have nothing to say. Try, I tell myself. Okay. Will I ever have a wedding? I doubt it. I was once the best man at Stephen and Alan's wedding. That's all I have to say. Try, I tell myself. Okay. As Frida Payne sang, all that's left is a band of gold. I'm trying a blank. <laughs> My resistance. Is it your writing about weddings, which to me mean a high form of love? Or am I struck dumb by the loud voices and clapping coming from the crowded room next door? Either way, I avoid the intimacy of writing this poem, as I have avoided the intimacy needed for marriage. I hate the word partner. I love the word lover. I have made love many, many times, but I have yet to call a man a lover and really mean it. I am angry that I have deprived myself of love, so I transfer my anger to the rote and stupid noise of the 12-step group next door in room 134. Once again, I cannot face my feelings like I cannot face a man I love and commit myself to him. Somewhere inside, I feel I am not worthy of the bright light of love that would shine down on my marriage. I am a lonesome soldier trudging off to war within myself. Shit, I can't write anymore. I don't trust myself. I'm getting too close to the heat of the truth. <laughs> <laughs>